So my name is Salem Stanley, and my company is Vacation Races. I started working on this business last year as I started to find, uh, look for problems in the race production industry. That's like marathons, 5Ks, triathlons, which I have a little bit of experience in. I knew I wanted to start a company. I didn't even have a problem to solve. So I started with a blank business model canvas. The industry uh, reports kind of suggested that half marathons was probably where the opportunity might be. So I indexed every half marathon in the Western United States, and in that data I saw, or I thought I saw, my business model. And I did know a few things. I know for races in general are high fixed cost businesses. You don't get enough participation, can't cover overhead, can't make money. Uh, I also know that uh, revenue typically comes from two places, uh, race registration and sponsorship. And with sponsorship, uh, you know, they use this as an advertising medium. So if you don't have a big audience, they're not gonna, they're not gonna talk to you. Uh, I also had a couple of key resources. I had a lot of passion for the industry and some web marketing skills that I thought I could put to use. Uh, now the green things, things I know, yellow are things that are assumptions, and once I figure out they're wrong, I'll turn them red. So in the data, I figured out uh, that there were a lot, there was a really fragmented industry, um, but very few races were able to, to get to a point where they could make money, uh, much less get any sponsor participation. So I thought it was ripe for a roll-up or consolidation. I'd acquire races in major metro areas, we'd implement best practices, cross-promote, we could offer some, con some convenient, well-managed races, and we'd have a big reach that sponsors were gonna love. Now, a couple of key assumptions here. First one, I assumed that all the race owners, or the majority of them, were uh, amateur uh, race directors. And they kind of saw the same opportunities that I saw, same trends, uh, started the race, but quickly saw that they were over their head. It's a lot harder than it sounds. Um, they probably welcomed my call to acquire them. My second assumption was that convenience was, was kind of the key uh, to a runner making a decision about which races to, to attend. So I wanted to test this. I talked to 14 race directors uh, in Utah, Arizona, and California, uh, over the phone and in person, and I found a couple of things. One, any race worth buying was either owned by a charity, or a nonprofit, a city, or a bigger company, and they just weren't gonna be available for sale. Uh, but I did learn that half marathon runners are a great market to go after. One race director put it this way, uh, to, run a, to finish a half marathon, you have to have some discipline in your life. And if you have discipline in your life, it usually spills over in your professional life, so you tend to, half marathon runners tend to be more affluent. So I knew this was a market I wanted to pay attention to. Uh, next thing I did is I talked to, I interviewed and, and surveyed 20, uh, uh, 20 half marathon runners, and uh, I wanted to know how far they'd be willing to travel to a race, just so I could figure out like how far a metro area I needed to focus on. And the response that surprised me, uh, half, over half of them said something like, there's no limit. One person said, I travel across the country, even internationally. Great excuse to go somewhere on vacation. So convenience was not gonna be as important as I thought it was. So half marathon, half marathon runners were gonna be a great market to go to, but acquiring races wasn't gonna work. And just offering convenient, well-managed races wasn't gonna be enough to get enough runners. And if I don't have a lot of runners, I can't get any sponsorship. So uh, the interesting thing was nine out of the 14 race directors I talked to said that sales and marketing was their, kind of, was their biggest challenge. So I thought, hey, for a minute, let's, maybe I got a, a problem here I can solve. Uh, but after talking to these guys, I realized it's a, it's a really small market, especially considering how cheap they are. Uh, so there was really no opportunity there. But they did say that social media was a great channel to kind of uh, communicate and, and get in touch with your runners. And from personal experience, I thought email would probably work too. Uh, so my web marketing skills could potentially give me an edge. But I needed to know more about half marathon runners. Why did they register? So I went up to two races here in Utah, and I, I stood kind of past the finish line, and after people ran, had literally just finished running a half marathon, I surveyed and talked to 77 different runners. And I found something interesting. People run for two reasons. If they're new to races, they need motivation to train. If this is more of a hobby for them, then they need, uh, they get a sense of accomplishment from entering races. So now I have a market I want to go to, something like what they want, but I don't know how to deliver that, so I, I didn't know. So I, I went and worked for a company, um, one of the companies I talked to hired me to work for them in a sales uh, role and marketing role over the summer. And I was introduced while I was working for them to a, an entirely new segment of the population of half mar marathon runners. I call them vacation runners. So this company puts on races in wine country. So people go to like Napa Valley, they'll uh, run the race, then they'll spend a couple of days touring wine country. And uh, the combination of this destination and the event adds a lot of value to people. Uh, and we see the same thing with Disney. So they've got an entire division where tens of thousands of people 
will uh, go run a race in a park and then they'll spend a couple of days uh, to, you know, visiting the happy, happiest place on earth. So after learning a couple more best practices from these guys, came home, wanted to do my own destination race, but I didn't have a destination. I didn't know what people wanted. Uh, top vacation spots are cities, uh, national parks, uh, tropical beaches. I just assumed tropical beaches got to be the winner, but I want to be sure. So I posted a survey on a couple of message boards online, had 94 people respond um, from 23 states, four countries, and I learned a few things. I learned, one, that over half of them had traveled and combined a, a race with a, a vacation. I also learned that national parks was where the interest was, uh, even more so than wine country, which I already knew. Had I also knew that, uh, or learned that half, uh, sorry, national parks could demand a, uh, about 62% premium in terms of pricing. So I pivoted to national parks and started focusing on my channels. I knew I needed a lot of interest, so I picked one of the, uh, some of the larger, uh, more popular national parks. Zion, for example, is number seven in annual visitation. So I picked Zion Half Marathon, we built a quick Facebook page, and I bought $29 worth of Facebook ads. <laughs> I didn't have a logo, I didn't have a course, I didn't have a date. I just threw it out there, I wanted to see what the response was. And uh, it was really positive. After about six weeks, we had over 1,000 Facebook likes. And, uh, but the best part was when the comments started coming in. So looking forward to a beautiful venue, uh, so excited I found this page, and this one, I don't care if I have to crawl across the finish line, Zion is my Disneyland, and there isn't a happier place in the world for me. Thank you for putting on this event. Um, I also knew that uh, email was going to be important. So we built some landing pages, drove a little bit of traffic from Facebook, and we found with some optimization, uh, we were able to get a 60% conversion. Now email is a little bit more of a commitment than just a Facebook like. Uh, so this was really significant, and we felt like we had some validation. So September 1st, uh, we really want to see if people give us money. Uh, so we opened registration, and we had 86 people uh, register that week. Um, and I want to emphasize how important Facebook has been. So we put it on events. We get one shot a year to put out a product and then try to iterate on it. So it's, it's slow goings there. But we're able to use Facebook, and we have used Facebook to, get, uh, to introduce new features and ask people and get effectively real-time feedback from them. Hugely valuable. It's been awesome. We've done some other testing and pivoting in terms of sponsors. Uh, we found a new revenue stream in terms of uh, merchandise. From sponsors and merchandise, uh, we have about $10,000 in revenue so far. So in total, we've talked to 200 runners. Uh, 14 race directors, five sponsors. We have over 7,200 Facebook likes and 2,000 opt-in emails. All of that's out of date and actually growing now. Um, in terms of traction, we have 44,000 in revenue, uh, 420 registered runners, and uh, seven sponsors. We've uh, announced three new locations and have received some similar feedback. This is what our canvas looks like today. Uh, we're not done pivoting. Uh, we're still out testing and discovering, but uh, we're really happy with where the process has taken us so far. Thank you. Salem, how do you know that uh, you can get a 62% premium on the national parks? You know, we just, I, I, I didn't know, frankly, um, but, but the data suggested it. So we asked people, said, how much would you pay for, uh, to run at your, the, de the destination that you uh, so that's targeted? The, that's the survey you talked about posting? Exactly. Okay. And and so that, that helped us figure out pricing, and then we've actually had people pay it now. Okay. So. okay. And how many respondents to the survey? That was 94. That one was 94. Okay. And then how many have registered? 420, it's 425. That, okay. Again, numbers are out of date. Getting them every day. It's awesome. <laughs> What's a good size for a race? So it's interesting. So our goal um, to make money, we're going to we'll kind of break even about 750, which is our goal this year. Um, but again, it's high operating leverage. So if we can get to 1500, we can make decent money. We can get to 3000, uh, I can make a lot of money. And so that's kind of the goal. So within three years, get there and have 15 races each doing at least 300,000 in, um, it's actually three to 400,000 in revenue. Um, should get us about five million in revenue and about, I'll take home about a million bucks a year. So as you continue to expand to different areas, what are the key assumptions that you, you keep going back to the model in the canvas to continue testing? So a couple of things. So one is just our product. So, you know, I mentioned we, we tested a couple of things. We fundamentally changed something uh, we, they call it a cupless race. So every race, you go to an aid station, they have cups for you, and uh, we introduced a cupless system that exists. We're like, hey, runners, what do you think? We're, we're thinking of doing this. We posted on Facebook, and within minutes, we had 30 people respond, oh, we love it, and it was, it was really good. So just, you know, even last week, I was saying, hey, what color of shirt should we have? And people were loving it. They were like, oh, like it was, you know, big debate, and everyone's arguing about, like, what color there should be. And uh, people even thanking me, like, oh, thanks for getting our input. 
So, so just what we're offering is, is one, and then two, I don't know if people want the destinations. I don't know if there's enough demand to go to Lake Powell. Like maybe not enough people want to run a Lake Powell. So we're offering these things, and if we don't see the demand, um, the race business is nice because people give us money early, and if we need to call it off, we can refund it all and it's no harm, no foul. So it's a great business, especially for this kind of discovery uh, model. Does that make sense? Um, a big part of your product is the actual national park yeah. itself. Uh, what have you done to figure out if you can actually get into those national parks? Yeah. And, and it's a great question. Good, great question. And that's, that's a big question. We've talked to a couple of, uh, uh, I've talked to Grand Canyon, I've talked to Zion, and it's just, it's not even, a, it's a non-starter, frankly. Um, but what we found is, is I think that's a hurdle. I think a lot of people are like, hey, you don't need to run in the park for people to dig it. Um, I've had people comments on, on Facebook that's like, yeah, we know it's not in the park, but that's why we're making it a vacation. So we're coming, we're going to spend a couple of days and, uh, and enjoy the park. So uh, Zion's an easy one, beautiful, even if you're not in the park. Grand Canyon's a little tougher, a few others are a little tougher, but uh, those are, again, some of the things that we got to test and, and figure out where the lines really are, if that makes sense. 